Hey guys, welcome to a new video on this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do live face recognition with a camera. So we're going to set up a system where we have a database of different kind of like uh, people and then we can actually like do some kind of like attendance system where we can recognize uh, people in the actual like images. So we're not only doing detection, but we're also doing recognition of the people that we're seeing or like the faces that we're seeing in the images. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribing to your channel. It will just mean a lot to me and the YouTube channel if you hit the subscribe button under the video here. Also, you can always become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can also help you out in your own projects. If you have some problems, I can help you out, give you some guidance and so on if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So let's just jump straight into Visual Studio Code here. We will just go over the code, the different kind of modules that we need, and then we'll go over how we can create our database, how we can actually like load in our images from a webcam, pass them through the model, and then how we can display the results so we can actually like do face recognition here in OpenCV with Python. And we're also going to use the face recognizer from DLib module. So first of all, we need to install DLib library. We can just go into our prompt, like command prompt or an Akanda environment or something like that. And then we can just hit pip install. And then we first of all we need to install something called dlib so we can just hit enter pip install dlib we can see that my uh, requirements here are already satisfied if you get an error here make sure to check out the, the last video i had about uh, face recognition just on single images for celebrities uh, go check that out i explain in there what you can do if you get some errors with installing dlib here because before we are going to install the face recognizer we actually like, need dlib on our computer so install the face recognizer, we just have pip install and then face recognition. And then we just hit enter. Then we'll actually like pip install the face recognition module or library here from DLib that we're going to do to do face recognition here and different kind of like uh, faces and so on. So here we see my requirements are already satisfied. So when you have these two steps here done and you have OpenCV on your computer, uh, then you were good to go to jump into the code here and run our face uh, recognition system again. All the code here will be on my GitHub. It will also be down in the description. So you can just go into my GitHub, uh, take the code, run it by yourself, create your own database with, da database with the faces that you want to do recognition on um, and so on. Then you can just run this Python script here on your own computer. But first of all here, we're going to import the module. So we're going to import face underscore recognition. And then we're going to op uh, import CV2 because we're going to use OpenCV to actually like, display the images and show uh, the results from the recognition that we get. And then also just import NumPy as NP as usual. So down here, first of all, we need to create our database. And this beta database here in this video, we're going to create a database with uh, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, Tiger Woods, and myself here. So we're going to have a database with four people. And then we just load in a single image for each of these individuals here um, to create this actual -like database. Then we're just going to create some face encoding. So we're going to extract the facial features that we have in our image, uh, like in our faces. And then we're going to go into store that in a database and then we can then match our results later on to actually like see what person are we detecting and recognizing um, in the images. And then we will also create a bounding box around that face and then we will display um, what face are we actually like recognizing in that bounding box. So here, just to create your database, again, you can choose your own uh, your own persons and so on. You can choose yourself, your family. If you want to create some attendance system, we're going to do that here on the channel as well. Um, in one of the upcoming videos so definitely hit the subscribe button so you will know when i upload that video so basically if you just want to create an attendance system you can just have like one image of all the persons that you want in your attendance system and then you can just create these encodings and then it's basically just like a database that we look into uh, when we're doing this recognition in the images so it's actually like really easy to set up when we use the face recognition module from dlib we actually like just need to call a couple of functions or like a couple of methods do some encoding past uh, images through the model get the results out and then just display the results so it's really good it's really intuitive and really easy to get started with and set up so that's why i'm using this recognizer here from uh from dlib it's also very it's exactly like also pretty accurate and and kind of fast as we're going to see at the end of this video here so we just go inside face recognition load in an image here we just pass in the path and then down here from face recognition we can go inside this method and get the face encodings to our image we're just going to take the served element of that because we just need the facial um, facial features so this obama face encoding vector or like this 
phase encoding variable here where it actually like just store all the features that we have in the faces so Barack Obama has some special features Elon Musk will have some special features I will have some special uh, some special features in my face so it could be like for example looking at the eyes the hair the mouth um, how my how how the different like how does how's the texture in my face and so on also the color in my face so it will just store these facial features and these um, encodings and then we can match those encodings later on when we load in new images and do predictions and try to recognize the person that is in the image so just do the exact same thing here for both Barack Obama, Elon Musk, Tiger Woods and myself then we can go down here and it's like create an array from the known face encodings so this will be our database and then we just have a database with all our encodings over here to the left then we also need to have the strings here of our known faces so we both have the encodings and then we have the corresponding names of those faces that we want to recognize in our system so that will again will be Barack Obama, Elon Musk, Tiger Woods and, and, and myself so then we can actually just go inside these lists and just check and get the indexes of of these persons and then we can display what person are we recognizing in the image later on then we're going to initialize some variables that we're going to use later on so first of all we go we're going to have the face locations of the faces that we're detecting in the images this will just be one function that we call from uh, the face recognition module and then we just store those results so that will be the bounding box around the detected face we will store that inside of this list and then we also have the face encoding so when we detect the face in the image we have the bounding box then we use that bounding box to get our face encodings and then those face encodings we use that to match against our database to actually like see if we can recognize some people or like some some faces from our database with the new image that we just passed through our model and then down here we're just going to have a variable uh, with process this frame so we're actually going to skip some frames to speed up this uh, to, to speed up this uh, this process and this system um, a bit if you have a really good computer and so on you can try to just don't skip any frames or like resize the images and so on and see if you can get some better accuracy and also some better results but if you're just going to, to create like a tenant system on some low budget hardware or something like that uh, this is a really good way to do it so here first of all i'm just going to leave this comment i have it on, on index one my webcam here but you can just put it on index zero if you just have a single camera attached to your pc so we're going to open up our video capture here at index one and then we will return that as our capture and then while true here so this will just be a while loop running uh, like all the time until we terminate the program by hitting a key on our keyboard then we're going to grab a single frame from our webcam so we just have our capture.read we'll store the image from a webcam in this frame variable then first of all we're going to resize our uh, frame from a video to one fourth of the size for faster like face recognition processing so th the size will just be one quarter of the original size uh, just to speed up the process you can also like half the resolution or you can even try to go with full resolution and see what results that you get so here we're just going to resize a frame and then we'll just store it in this variable small frame then we need to convert our image from BGR color here because OMCV uses BGR color format to RGB color format um, as we're going to do it in this way so now we have our RGB small frame and then we can actually just pass that frame through our model do our face locations for doing like to get our bounding box around the faces and then we can do face encodings on that face afterwards so here we're going to have we're going to look at our if statement here so we if process this frame so if you actually like want to process a frame because here we're only going to process every other frame in the video to save time you can also take like every four frame uh, every eight frame every tenth frame or something like that or just try to run your model here on every frame it will slow down your system a bit but you'll also get a higher accuracy and so on so it's a bit of a trade-off and you can try to play around with it uh, yourself in the python script again the code will be on my github you can just go in there download it and run it on your own computer so now we're just going to take our image pass it through our model so we basically just call this method here from the face recognition module face underscore location we pass in our rgb rgbd uh, rgb small frame and then we just get out the face location so the boundary boxes as i showed you in the last video uh, with the face recognition so we're down here after we have actually gotten our face location and also our small frame we can just pass that into this face encodings function as we already already did when we created our database so we just also have our face underscore encodings we pass in our small frame and we pass in the face location that we just found in the line up here above then we actually get all the face encodings that were detected in the image so now we both have uh, all the, the the bounding boxes of the faces that we detect in our new image that we passed through our model and we also have the face encodings 
So then we can actually like just go in and run through all the phase encodings and see if those phasing, phasing codings act like match some of the phasing codings that we have in our database. And if, if that is true, we'll just draw the bounding box and write the name of the person that we're recognizing in that frame. So here we're going to have an, an empty lift if with our frame names, uh, like our face names. And then we're just going to have a for loop running through all the phase encodings. As I just said, we're just going to run through all of phase, phase encodings and compare those with the phase encodings that we have in our database. So here we're going to see if our face is a match for the known faces. So what, the, what faces do we have in our database? And then we just have a variable here called matches, which is equal to face recognition dot compare faces. So we're basically just comparing our known face encodings with, with each of the face encodings that we detected in, in the image. So for each face that we have detected in the image, we have a face encoding, that face encoding, we're matching that to the face encodings that we have in our database. And that will return this list here with our matches here at the end. We also have a name here unknown. So if we're not, uh, if we're not detecting anything that is in our database, we just have the name unknown. And then down here, if our match was found in known phases, we just use the first one. Uh, but down here, we can actually also use the known phases with the smallest distance to the new phase. So you can also you, you can go just go with this one up here, or you can try uh, you can try this down here if you just want to use the known phase with the smallest distance uh, to the new phase. So it will actually like reduce some false positives and so on. So you should definitely just go with the, the with the thing here down at the bottom. So inside the face recognition, we can go in and find the face distance, and then we actually just find the, find the face encoding with the smallest distance to the known face encodings that we have inside um, that we have inside of our database, and that will be our face distances. And then we can just go in and take the arc min value here, so we get the index of the of the smallest distance in our face distances, which is the, just the distances between our encodings. So just fall, find the smallest. Uh, the smallest distance or like the, the face that is closest to the known face encodings that we found in our image and then we just go inside our matches we index that match and then we just set our name equal to our name known faces with this index here best match index so we find the best match and then we just go inside our known face names and then we just uh, index that and then our name will act like be that uh, be the name of that person because that will be our detection uh, so that will be the face that we recognized with the smallest distance to the new encoding that we just got in uh, from our function. Then we're just going to append that name to our face names. And then we just set process this frame equals not process this frame. So we just skip every second frame. So now we have all the names here of the recognized people in our image. Then we can go down here and actually just display the results. So we have our uh, follow up here just running through the boundary boxes and also the names that we have detected. So each of these indexes will be for every person that we detect in the image. So we can actually just go in and index them. So we can have multiple uh, faces detected and recognized in the image at the same time, as we just that did up here with the for loop, where we're just running through all the face encodings that we have. So down here, we just have our bounding box. We have our top corner. We have the uh, top, top right corner, top left corner. Uh, and then we also have the bottom left down here at the bottom. So this is basically just what we pass into our rectangle that will draw the bounding box around the face um, here in OpenCV. Then we're just going to zip our face locations and the face name. So we have our bounding box with the corresponding face name. So we can just directly draw that with OpenCV on our image. Then we just scale up back here our face locations since we have actually like downscale our image to one quarter of the resolution. So we're just going to multiply all our pixel values here by four so we can draw a boundary box on the original resolution image that we loaded in or like got in from our webcam. So here we're drawing a boundary box around the face. We just pass in the rectangle. Then we just pass in the image that we want to draw the rectangle on. We pass in the top left corner and the bottom right corner uh, pixels. So we have the top left corner over here and the bottom right corner um, over here. And then we can actually like just draw a rectangle uh, with that information, we have the color and then we have the thickness of our rectangle. So now we can draw a label with a name below the face. So we're just going to draw a rectangle, which will just be one color. We're just going to draw it um, at the side or like below our bounding box. And then we just put the text with the name on top of this rectangle that we're drawing. And we're just filling out this rectangle that we have. So we'll just have a bounding box with filled with a rectangle under it, where we're just going to put the name of the of the person that we're recognizing in that image um, inside of that rectangle. Then we're just going to imshow our image. So we're just going to call cv2.imshow and then we just pass in the frame that we want to 
show and this will just be the original frame that is the original resolution that we got in from our webcam as well uh, because we have already resized or like scaled back up our face locations of our boundary boxes and also the name and then we can just here we can just check if we had a queue on a keyboard we will go after we'll just break off the while loop and then we'll terminate the program when we terminate the program we're going to release our webcam and then we're going to destroy all the windows that we have opened up uh, with OpenCV. So this is basically everything that we need. We have created a database, we have created some face encodings, then we just pass our image through uh, through our model with the face recognition module, then we get out some results, then we have just follow loops running through those results with the rectangles or the bounding boxes around the faces and also the face encodings. Then we just match those face encodings, we get the names of the people that we, that we actually like detect and recognize in the image and then we just display the results here at the end. So this is basically what the code here does and now we're just going to run it to see the results that we get. So now we're going to open up with the new camera here I got from Econ Systems. Again, it's a really nice camera. Definitely check those out um, and also check out the video where I go through this camera um, in one of the previous videos. So now we have opened up the, the video frame here. We can now see me in the frame. It's a bit laggy, but it act, does act like the tech me as Nicola Nielsen. Uh, so this is actually really good. Sometimes it loses track because my 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 face here at, is at the side, and also we have only one image encoding of my face in the data set. So it's actually like really good. It just used one face, it, even with a it, with another camera uh, that image were taken from. We can just have one image, get the image encodings, and then we just have this really uh, nice result that we get. If I just look directly into the camera, we can see that it actually like recognizes my face uh, pretty good. So now we're going to try out the other guys that we have in our database, Barack Obama, Tiger Woods, and Elon Musk. So I just went into Google, found some images of, of those uh, of those people. So here we're just going to see the result if we're actually like able to detect them. We can see here that it just really accurately finds Barack Obama here in the image. Maybe we can get the images over here to the left. If we get a bit closer, it still detects the, the other one. Here we can see that these faces are actually like just too small to be able to detect because we're actually like down uh, that we're like resizing our images to one quarter of the size but again we can just see the large image over here to the right it just perfectly detects it um, and it doesn't even lose track sometimes we get an unknown but this acts like a really nice face recognition system uh, that we can create so the next example here we have is tiger woods so we can just see if it's able to detect tiger woods if we just get a bit closer again we can just see it perfectly just it just snaps on tiger woods and it detects uh it acts like detects him if we go down, see if we can detect the small images here. Um, now we lose some autofocus here. It isn't really able to find like these smaller images here of Tiger Woods, but we can see like the large one up here. It just finds him perfectly uh, every time for every single frame that we pass through our model. The last example here that we're going to do is Elon Musk here. We can just see, first of all, unknown, but Elon, it detects is really good. He has some really nice features in his head. so. That's probably why the face recognizer here is so good for him. Let's see if we're able to detect some of the smaller uh, images over here to the left. It doesn't really seem to be the case. If we try to look at the big, the big image here again, it just perfectly, it just snaps on him, finds him and acts like really, it's really accurate with finding these detections. Again, we're skipping every single frame, but again, it recognizes all the different kind of persons that we have in our data set. Again, we only have one image we only have one image of each of the persons that we act like have uh, just shown here. So you can tra you can train it with multiple people. You can have like 10, 20, 50 different kind of like uh, people in your data set. You just need to find the image encodings. Then we can match those image encoding with the new faces that we take in our image. If it is if the face is not in the database, it will just return unknown as you all as you also saw here when I run the code. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, this is just a really nice face recognizer. I just I just think that this is really cool. We can create a lot of cool applications and really nice applications with attendance systems and so on. It's really easy to, to set up. You only need a couple of images in your database, create the image encodings and so on. So thank you guys for watching this video here again. And remember the subscribe button and bell notification on that video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision, how we can use stereo vision to get depth information in our images, combine that with point clouds, point clouds, processing, and so on. So if you're interested in that computer vision tutorial, I'll link to it up here, or else I'll just see you next video, guys. Bye for now.